All right, first thought or first section is going to be from the first verse, which is this, remember now. Go to the very first verse now of uh, chapter, chapter 12. It says this, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The word, the key word uh, in that verse is now. We, all, we said last week, and we've said a few times, the most precious commodity that we have is life. That is something that you can't create, uh, you can't destroy, but God's really the one that takes it away. God is the only one that can give life. Uh, life is miraculous. So the most precious thing that we have is, is life. Uh, within that life, all that we have is now. You cannot bring back the past and change it or relive it. You cannot fast forward and live in the future. So that means... Anything that you're going to do, anything that you're going to do for God or for yourself is now. That's all you have. You have now. Too often people have this attitude, well, I'll do this for God when, and then fill in the blank. Whatever it is. Uh, for, the, for the high schooler, it's when they get into college. For the college age student, it's when they finish up the craziness of college. For the young adult, it's maybe when they settle down and have a family. For the married couple, it's when the kids stop screaming every day, all day. For the, kids, for the uh, uh, parents of teenagers, it's when they you know, stop having to shuck out you know, thousands of dollars to, and, and drive their kids everywhere for everything they're doing. And for the, the middle age uh, folks, empty nesters, it's whenever they maybe spend a year and kind of recuperate from the last one moving out of the house. And all of a sudden you see what, what happens is you kind of, well, I'm going to, well, I will. I'll just wait until your life away and you don't do anything for the Lord. So the key is remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. They mean well, but that tomorrow never comes. Here we're challenged to remember the one capital O, who is the most important in our youth right now. Because if not, we'll come to the end of our life and we'll realize that we have no joy, we have no pleasure, and we have no fulfillment. Why? Because the true joy, true happiness, true fulfillment, true pleasure comes from doing what God has for us. We can do a lot of great things. You can do a lot of fun things in your life. Build a business. Build uh, a side hustle. Build uh, a great uh, career or, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what you do in your, in your, in your past time or in your, in your spare time, uh, hobby. hobby, you can build a great hobby, big word. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can build a great hobby. You can do all those things, but it doesn't bring true satisfaction and happiness. True satisfaction and happiness comes from your responsibility and your purpose that God gave you to do in your life. You may say, well, I already missed the boat. That verse doesn't even apply to me. I'm middle-aged now or I'm old now and I am not able to remember my creator in the days of my youth because the days of my youth are gone. I want to encourage you, if you're middle-aged or if you're a senior, you're as young today as you're ever going to be. So in this sense, from today forward, uh, you are as young as you're ever going to be. So start remembering, start putting God first in your life today. So next we're going to look at this verses two through uh, eight, I believe. And it's talking about the day of our departure. There's only one way into this life, and that's from your mother. That's the life that God has given you, born of water, the Bible says. And there's only one way out. No, there's two ways out. There's either through death or if God comes back and raptures us. There's really only one way out, right? One way in, one way out. And this is outlining how where it says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, and then it reminds us that the day of our departure from this world is coming. Look at verse 2. While the sun, nor the light, nor the moon, nor the stars be darkened, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. What are the keepers of the house? House talking about the body. Keepers of the house talking about the appendages, the arms, and the legs. What does it say they're going to do as we get older? They tremble. I remember my brothers and I, when, when we were in, uh, younger and then in high school, and we would go to uh, tender care and sing for the folks and whatnot. You notice almost all those people, they have a shake or something. Some of it, it's their heads, they shake back and forth or their hand has a tremble. And uh, this is terrible, but I remember we used to say with those people, like if their hand was shaking, what would happen if you 
held her hand still, would something else start to shake? Uh, and we would joke about that. It's, we were just monsters as kids. But as you get older, you get a shake, you get a twitch, you get a quiver. And it's saying there, as you get older, the keepers of the house tremble. The strong men shall bow themselves. If you give my grandpa a hug, it's like hugging an old, blown out tire. He's got these different knots and different muscles that have been pulled and put back in and, and a hernia here and a hernia there from all the many years of well drilling and hard work. And even strong men, my grandpa's a very strong man, my father-in-law, I've watched him uh, get frustrated with the hood of an S10 that was latched and wouldn't come off. And he took a step back, took a deep breath, grabbed the hood of that S10 and ripped it off its hinges. An extremely strong, extremely strong man from years of working in construction. But as he's getting older, you know what he's starting to do? He's starting to wake up and he comes out when my mother-in-law wakes him up in the morning and he hobbles out. Why? Because as we get older, even strong men are stooped. They're bent from years of work. The grinders cease because they are few. When talking about this metaphor of the body, what would the grinders be? Your teeth. They, you stop chewing, you stop grinding. Why? Because you don't have many left. My grandpa used to say, if you ignore your teeth, uh, they'll go away, right? Uh, and as you get older, the teeth start to decay and fall out and, and uh, the grinder cease because they're few. Uh, those that look out of the windows be darkened, talking about the eyes, start to lose sight. The door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. What's that talking about? Talking about very possibly losing your hearing. Uh, he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, talking about as you get older, you don't require as much sleep. Uh, and all the daughters of the music shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high. The fear of height uh, and different things. Now that can be for all ages, but I was reminded just this last week, we went and looked at the big trucks and grandma climbed up to the top of the big truck uh, at Calcite and it was kind of shaking and I could tell she was a little nervous. I said, you're right. She said, yeah, I'm good. And then you could see in her eyes something switched where she wasn't good anymore. And she says, I'm getting down. And Papa said, well, people are coming up. She's like, I don't care. I'm getting down right now. She started backing down. And the people realized, well, she's coming down uh, because uh, there was just kind of, it was kind of swaying and it was just creating, it was just not good. And she had to get down. And fears shall be in the way. You're more cautious of danger as you get older. You ever, uh, as young people, you leave, you know, right? And you get the spiel, you know, make sure the kids are buckled in. Make sure you buckle in. Make sure you drive careful. If you need, if you get tired, pull over. All these real obvious, you know, pieces of information that you never thought of before, you know. Uh, but why? Because as you get older, you get wiser and you know, hey, just a, a, an instant of not paying attention or not being buckled in and life can be gone just like that. Fear. Uh, shall be in the way. The almond tree shall flourish. An almond tree, when it's in uh, fruit bearing, has a silver color, talking about the hair as you get older. And the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and mourners go about the streets. In Eastern culture, it was actually a job. You could be a hired mourner. And as the days were getting closer, where a family member was getting ready to pass away, you would pay people to go out in front of the house and walk in the streets and mourn for the one that was going to pass away. So uh, uh, when the time's getting closer, it's talking about the mourners being in the street. There was a little, little girl, she went to her grandma and said, Grandma, will you croak like a frog? Grandma says, croak like a frog, why? She says, because dad said when grandma croaks, we can go to Disneyland. But when the mourners are in the streets, when, the peop when you know your time's coming, or the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, all talking about death. Look at verse 7. Verse 13 is probably the most common verse in this passage. Verse 7 is my favorite verse out of this passage. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto the God who gave it. Isn't that great? We come into this life just dust, just made from what was here, and we take nothing out. We return right back to the dust as it was. The only thing that we do in this life that counts, the only thing that we take out is what we did for God. The Spirit goes back to the God who gave it, and the only rewards that we have, the only thing that we do that counts is what we did 
for God. Truly, nothing goes with us when we go. Vanity of vanities, just a short time, a vapor. Vapor of vapors, saith the preacher, all is vanity. So that's reminding us that not only ought we to remember now our Creator, and not only a reminder that our day of departure is coming, next we see words of truth. Verse 9, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. How can a man work behind multiple beasts of burden, plow a field with several horses? Across from my in-law's place where they live there in Morley, uh, there is an Amish farm, and I've been able to watch in the spring where I... Uh, a, a team of horses plowing with an old school plow and watching those big, uh, I think they were Clydesdales maybe, that they were plowing with. Just incredible to see a, a, a little, little guy out there riding a plow with a couple, two, three big horses. How was he able to control those horses? Or back in these days, they would use oxen or water buffalo. How are they able to plow with multiple yoke of incredible, incredibly strong animals with a goad? A uh, stick with a point at the end where they would poke them in the posterior and encourage them to keep plowing straight. Boop, 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 boop. And the words of the wise are as goads. They keep us going forward. The words of wisdom from the Bible, from the preacher, from the wise leader in our life is a goad that keeps us on the right course and keeps us moving forward. Because sometimes we want to go over here or sometimes we want to go over there. And that goad pokes us and says, nope, 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 not over there, over here. Or sometimes we just get slow and tired and that goad just pokes us right straight and it makes us just, hey, keep going, keep moving, press forward. Verse 11 also calls those words of truth, those words of wisdom, nails fastened by the master of assemblies. There are principles that we need to have nailed down. If there's things that about faith and about life and about spiritual things that you don't know or you don't have nailed down. Get those things nailed down. The foundations, the fundamentals of our faith. And I hope and I, I believe that uh, dad's preaching over the years has been very fundamental, very foundational. And I try to do the same. Just preach very basic Bible truths. Truths of the word don't need to be rethought, just retaught, right? We need to be reminded over and over and over again how simple God's plan is, but yet how we just need to simply do the simple plan. But we need to have those things nailed down. Why? Because we need to have those for us for living, but also to pass on to the next generation. Our church has a lot of young people that were that next generation, and now that generation is creating another generation that needs to have those things nailed down and passed down to them. 2 Timothy two verse or 3, verse 15 says, And that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We need to have those things nailed down for ourselves and then be passing those things down. And not just me, not just Kurt in Sunday school, not just all the other Sunday school teachers, but all of us teaching and admonishing and edifying one another, saying, hey, I learned this in my Bible reading this week. Uh, this was a big help to me, and just sharing uh, what we've learned. The import, that is the importance, these words of truth is the importance of godly fathers and mothers, teaching and training in uh, the home. There is no way in the world that me preaching on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and Brother Kurt in Sunday school is going to be enough for your children to have a fundamental foundation of the faith. You have to be able as parents to teach and train and reinforce the same fundamentals over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Same thing, that's the importance of teachers, school and Sunday school. Christian schools and homes, Sunday school, uh, VBS, junior camp, why do we have these things? To teach those words of wisdom. Isn't it interesting how the, the thing that our government and the thing that Satan is attacking most are the, are the institutions that teach those fundamentals, that teach those words of truth. The home, the education system, and 
the church. All three of those institutions are under attack. Why? Because those are the only three institutions where the truth is going to be taught. But because of, of sexual and identification crises, the home is being attacked and roles are being changed and reversed and, and, uh, and questioned. And in the church, uh, the church is unimportant or trying to be closed down and shut down. And the public education system is a, a laughing stock. That's where the words of truth are supposed to be coming from. So if Satan knows if he can get rid of those places, there will literally will be no truth. So at a young age, preachers and wise men need to seek out knowledge and words of truth and share those with the next generation so that they can be as goads and nails to help the next generation move forward. Next, we'll see the conclusion, and we're almost done here. Uh, Solomon saying, I say that all that, to say this, or in closing, or uh, if you don't get anything, get this. This is what he's saying in verse 12 and 13. And further, by these my son be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You say that's so simple. It's got to be oh, so simple. It has to be more complex than that. It has to be more difficult than that. The life that God has for us is not complex. It's not difficult. It's not something that we have to be like, oh, I don't know what God wants me to do. God is very plain what he wants us to do. But yet, in that simplicity, how often do we fail to do those simple things? You may say, I do those things. Do you, though? Do you really fear God? Do you put him first? Do you recognize him as the authority in your life? Listen to what uh, the book of Romans says in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Very common verses for salvation, but notice it in context of this, talking about the fear of God. Romans 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues have they used the seat. The poison of asps is with their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way, and the way of peace have they not known. Get this, verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Solomon said, all you have to do to please God and to do what he wants you to do is fear him and keep his commandments. And Paul here saying, there's no fear of God before the eyes of these men. That was literally just years after Jesus Christ himself was walking on earth. How much more then do we have a generation in a world that has no fear of God before their eyes? 2,000 years after Jesus was here. So how do we keep his commandments? Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge is the whole, of the holy is understanding. How do we keep his commandments? One, we have to keep the commandments that he gives us in Scripture. He's laid out a lot of things very plainly. Do this. Don't do this. But then also he commands us every day, does he not? Do you ever feel that tug where you know God is asking you to do this, to go to this person, to give this, to do this, to, to sign up for this, to go here? And how often do you say, ah, I'm, I'm just crazy. That's, that can't be God. He's not speaking to me. I, and push it aside. That's God giving you a commandment. That's God saying, hey, through his Holy Spirit, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. Do you listen to that daily commandment on top of the commandments that he's already given us in his word? This verse, we're almost done here. The, this verse really shook me. Jesus was on earth. He said, we, we call you Lord. We know who you are. Luke 6, verse 46, and Jesus said, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus said, Don't call me your Lord. Lord means master. I'm not your master if you don't obey me. The master, when he says jump, the servant says how high and how often and where. He said, don't call me Lord if you're not willing to do what I ask you to do. So if we are fearing him, if he is our Lord and we're following his commandments, then we need to do what he asks us to do. Lastly, we see the judgment. When we were young, Mom and dad, mom particularly, would, when they were going to be gone, they would leave us a list on the counter of chores to do, the dreaded list. Mom's a list to make her. And she would leave us a list and punch list of all the things to do, chores for each of us, Drew, Kurt, Ethan. 
If we didn't do those things, there would be a reward for not doing those things. And if we did do those things, then we didn't get the reward for not doing them. Uh, so uh, we would have to do the list. Well, sometimes the lists would be lost. So uh, we had a new way that she would do it. She would write the list and then she would tape it to the counter uh, right on the island to make sure that we didn't lose the list. So we'd be doing the list and we were allowed to play as long as the list was done. So we would all get together and say, listen, mom gave us all these things on our list, but we don't, some of us have things on the list we don't like to do. Uh, so let's trade, you know, we trade lists. So, so Ethan and I would get the list done and then what generally would happen was Curtis would have all these excuses why he wouldn't be able to do the things on his list. But like, hey, Kurt, we'd check up. Hey, Kurt, did you do this? Oh, I wasn't able to do that because of this. Well, did you do this? Oh, I wasn't able to do that because of this. We're like, dude, did you do anything or you just sit in your room and watch us work? So we'd all work together to get the list done. But we knew that at some point you'd hear the car, tires, crackling the gravel coming down the driveway, and the day of judgment was uh, approaching. And uh, all the deeds that we had done or not done were going to be tried by fire, uh, of what sort they were, and we are going to see uh, what rewards we were going to receive. Solomon says here, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Are you ready for the judgment? Are you living your life remembering your creator in the days of your youth. You're as young as you ever will be, so today is the day of your youth going forward. Remember him. Put him first. Are you remembering that there is a day of departure coming? And it's not in order of what we think oldest to youngest. It could be oldest and then middle-aged and then older and then super young, and we don't know who's going, who's going to be here next, this time next year. We don't know. Are you remembering that there's a day of departure coming? Are you remembering the words of truth, the importance of having those things nailed down and passing those on to the next generation? The conclusion where Solomon says, just fear God, put him first, show respect to him, keep his commandments. All of that because there's a judgment coming and God is going to say, I gave you these things. I gave you this time. I gave you this treasure. I gave you this talent. What'd you do with it? Let's, let's take a look. How did we steward that that I gave you? Is he going to say, well done? Or is he going to say, you, 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 didn't, you could at least given it to the exchangers to, to get a little bit of interest?